Uh, next up is uh, Phyllis Marshall, followed by Shanae Buffington. Hello. Good evening, uh, Mayor Singh, members of the council. My name is Phyllis Marshall, and I've been a resident of Elk Grove for nearly 30 years. Uh, my daughters were raised in Elk Grove. They went to public school, to Folks Ranch, Toby Johnson, Franklin High School, and Elk Grove has served my family very well. My twin daughters ended up getting scholarships at Columbia University, and one of them graduating with a PhD from Princeton University. Uh, it has been a very inclusive community, but probably less than two weeks ago, as I was traveling down Elk Grove Boulevard, I noticed a big billboard that said, Civil War Days in Elk Grove. Uh, I had to do a double take and actually had to do a U-turn because I said I probably saw something that said Civil Rights Day in Elk Grove. But no, I was right. It said Civil War Days in Elk Grove. As an African-American woman who is a descendant of slaves, slavery uh, having occurred here in the United States for over 400 years with more than 15 million children, women, and men subjected to one of the worst atrocities uh, in the world. You know, t for me to, in, in 2023, to drive down Elk Grove Boulevard on my way to get my favorite sandwich at Labu and to see that we were hosting a Civil War Day in Elk Grove in California was disturbing to me. Um, African Americans are subject to all types of trauma, and when I passed that sign that day, all I can think of was Elk Grove is somehow involved in glorifying the Civil War and the Confederacy. It saddened my heart to see this. Uh, I did some research, and I certainly found out that the city of Elk Grove has put in place ordinances with regard to the discharge of firearms and noise, and that there was a similar event that was attempted to be hosted in 2018 at Elk Grove Park that had to be canceled. canceled. So I certainly uh, appreciate the work of this council in making sure that those types of events don't occur, given the fact that we have experienced high incidence of gun violence, uh, not only in the United States, but even here in California and in this community. Um, you know, I am going to continue to pursue this issue with the Board of Supervisors and, and with the state of California, because I think that it is ill-advised Ill for events to be able to take place on private property to advertise to the community to invite children to participate in those events where guns will be fired, cannons will be shot off, uh, totally disregarding uh, the sensitivities of particularly individuals such as myself, African Americans, who know that these types of celebrations are celebrating the Confederacy. Uh, you know, racial tension is at an all-time high in the United States, and it saddens me that in the city of Elk Grove, this wonderful city, that we are going to be hosting an event like that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ma'am, and then, and just, you know, for those paying it, though, um, I usually don't deliberate or offer comments during public comment, but I do want to remind those that are attending, um, at least on this subject, um, this event is in the county. It is not in the city of Elk Grove. And the sign is on private property, not on city property. So I did look into that as you had requested. And I share a lot of the sentiments that you shared. Um, so I appreciate you coming. But for the record, I just want members of the public to know it is not in the city of Elk Grove. Um, so we have Shanae Buffington followed by Heather Vargas. Good evening, council members. My name is Shanae Buffington. I'm the 47th president of the California Association of Black Lawyers, an association that represents 6,000 African-American attorneys, judges, law professors, and students. CABLE was organized in 1977 to address issues facing black lawyers and judges. And one of our objectives is to vigorously defend black people from those who would consciously or otherwise um, consciously or otherwise um, unconsciously deny us basic human and legal rights. Uh, since Cable's inception, we have been instrumental in increasing the number of African-American judges throughout California. 
and we meet annually with state legislators to advocate for social justice reforms that impact persons of color in the African American community. Cable strongly opposes the reenactment of Civil War days. It seeps of racial um, divisiveness. Uh, the Civil War era um, taking place in 1861 through 1865, as you know, was a horrific time for African Americans in this country. Uh, there was slavery, brutal beatings, lynchings, racial strife, separation based on the notion that blacks were inferior property and, 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 and unequal to persons of other races. Um, perpetrate, uh, continuing an error that has left an indelible mark on our history in this country counters unity, harmony, inclusiveness, equity, and equality that civil rights leaders such as the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and many more civil rights activists fought hard for. Today we call for restoration of civility, acceptance, progress, and embracing others from different ethnic, racial, and socioeconomic backgrounds. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Heather Vargas, followed by Alian Murphy Hassan. And I apologize if I'm saying it wrong. Good evening, Mayor and Council. My name is Heather Vargas. I'm a resident of Elk Grove. I'm here to speak in opposition also to the event of the Civil War days in Elk Grove. I live close to Mahon Ranch, which is the private property in which this event is being held. Um, it is, so for, for some statistical historical information about Elk Grove, which you should all be familiar with as we serve the city, is that we are one of the most diverse cities in the United States, let alone in California. Some of the statistics that we are, are rounded up 41% white, 29.5% Asian, and 11% black. And I happen to be very proud that I'm actually the only white person on my immediate street of my block. I have a diverse community of people that I interact with, that my children grow up and play with. And I'm very proud of that fact, and that's why I've chosen to raise my family in Elk Grove. The Civil War event um, is the only and sole purpose for any Civil War celebration is to create hostility and racial divide. They will tell you it is for educational purposes. And if that were true, then persons of color, especially black people, would be involved in the content to teach and train and educate around the history surrounding the Civil War. And we are still struggling as a community, as a nation, as an entire union of a system of oppression that holds people of color, especially black people, to a totally different standard. And to drive down the street, and I have blended children in my family, and to see the signs. And I do want to acknowledge, Mayor, that you said that some of them are on uh, private property. There are many of them on public land. I passed two of them tonight on the way to this meeting. So they are all over the city of Elk Grove. I have been told that this council has been told of our concerns and some members of the community, um, and that there's technically nothing that can be done because it's a private property and it's Sacramento County. An imaginary line cannot be the reason we ignore the facts and feelings and the stoking of racism that's happening with this event. The city is listed in the event name. Our city is used as the address. The signs are posted throughout the city. And at a minimum, city council needs to demand that the Elk Grove name be stricken from this event and not used in any way. Secondarily, no money should be given to any organization like the Historical Elk Grove Society that is co-sponsoring this. And you should vocally use your influence with the Sacramento County to get this event canceled. The co one of the other co-sponsors of the event is Native Sons of the Golden West, which is an organization that is, was founded in 1875 to restore the history of California pre-gold rush. That history is about white people history, has nothing to do with indigenous people who, whose land was stolen, let alone the term native sons in and itself is insulting because it insinuates it's around indigenous people and it is about old white men. That's who runs the Native Sons. They have a history, which is easily found on Google, of, um, of actively against Japanese descent people trying to get their votes removed, having them put in internment camps. And the last thing I'd like to say, if I have 10 more seconds, please. I've never been please to one of these meetings, and I have had the privilege and honor as a person to travel across okay. this country. I have been to Dachau, Auschwitz, 
Ma'am, to be fair, your time is up. I understand. So but we, no one in those countries celebrates the Holocaust. It is an absolute embarrassment if you allow this to happen. So it, again, um, if you have the addresses of those that you say are in the city, um, please share them with us so we can have code enforcement look at it um, as we have with the other sign to determine that it was on private property. So if you can provide those locations, we would appreciate it. Um, and then as a reminder, the city of Elk Grove is not a sponsor or, a, or has participated or providing any funding. Um, yes, ma'am. Thank you. And I'm sure you'll correct me on the spelling well, <laughs> or pronunciation. Think, you pretty much pr pr pronounced okay. it okay. My name is Ali Ann Murphy Allie. Hassan. I'm the former first VP and lifetime member of the Greater Sacramento NAACP. President Betty Williams sends her greetings and regrets that she's unable to be here tonight. On May 6th and 7th, the Elk Grove Historical Society, the Linda May Mahoon Lemar Foundation, the Mayhound Ranch, and the Native Sons of the Golden West are sponsoring the Civil War Enactment Day here in the greater Elk Grove region. The NAC, NAACP Executive Board and its members, many of whom live in Elk Grove, including myself since 1991, are concerned about the safety, noise abatement, and policing involved with hosting events like of this kind, events that feature guns and cannon fire. Instead of highlighting lessons learned from such conflict, we are requesting out of abundance of caution that this board use its considerable influence with the Sacramento County Board of Supervisors to do what you did in 2018, and that is to cancel this event of 2023. Traffic and noise will, can disrupt the hundreds of families, businesses, recreational facilities, religious organizations, hospitals in the area will, will definitely, definitely be negative, negatively impacted. Disruption of peaceful living, working, praying, and playing will have to be endured for two days. I reiterate our concerns, traffic, noise abatement, and policing. Please understand that we are in support of preserving history because the past, from the past, we learn best practices for the future. But this is not the way to do it. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is Dr. Martha Burnett Collins, followed by Fahiza Alim. Good evening. My name is Dr. Martha Burnett Collins, and I live in 95624, where the Civil War days are supposed to be have their reenactment. I am against this reenactment. The Civil War was a divisive and terrible time for the country, and especially African Americans. The premise of the war was to keep the African Americans as slaves so the slave owners could continue to get free labor for the South, and to free them and to count every African American as a complete person, not three-fifths of a person per the North. There was a lot of bloodshed, however, on April 9, 19, 1865, righteousness and morality won. The slaves were freed. We commemorate this, commemorate this freedom on June 19th, which is now a federal holiday. Elk Grove, Sacramento County should not relive this treacherous times. This is a white stain on the country. If you have to reenact a time in America's history, let's reenact the civil rights days where people took to the streets for, to fight for social justice. Let's reenact women's suffrage when women got the right to vote per the 19th Amendment. Let's reenact the day African Americans got the right to vote per uh, the 15th Amendment, and let's reenact Brown versus the Board of Education when the Supreme Court ruled that racial segregation in public schools was unconstitutional. Let's reenact July 10th, 2015, when the Confederate flag was taken down from the state capitol in South Carolina, and finally, let's celebrate July 1st, 2000, when the city of Elk Grove became a city and it woke up and hi hired the first uh, mayor <laughs> Woman of color, mayor. Let's move forward, Madam Mayor, not backwards. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Next up is Fahiza Alim, followed by Alana Matthews. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for the privilege of speaking before you. Let me read what I have. My name is Fahiza Alim. 
I'm a former Sacramento Bee reporter for 27 years, former staffer at the legislature, and just recently retired after 15 years as an executive staff for the California Civil Rights Department. I'm here as a concerned citizen. I'm here, as the imam said, to promote peace and not division. I want to echo the imam's words. We need to unite. The Civil War was divisive. It divided our country and our people as the Union fought the Confederates to free the slaves and unite our country. There's no glory in reliving violence and bloodshed that pitted brother against brother. Our country is currently experiencing an epidemic of violence, gun violence. Why would we promote it? Why would we encourage it? You don't see us raising the Union Jack because England lost. <laughs> The Civil War, the Confederates lost. Let it die. These Civil War days are not benign. These enactments are a reoccurring cancer. As Frederick Douglass said, the price of freedom is eternal vigilance. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Alana Matthews uh, currently is our final speaker. Good evening. Thank you for the opportunity to speak this evening. And I'm reminded of how I stood before the council and with the city of El Grove in 2017 to lead the racial reconciliation town hall where we launched our campaign and declared that El Grove is no place for hate. I again stood with at the request of Mayor Bobby Singh and in collaboration with Council Member Rob Brewer, then CSD Director, to lead a racial healing circle when in 2021 we saw increased violence and hate against our Asian American brothers and sisters. And I stand here again tonight to stand against hate because in 2017, it was sparked by the racial epithets and threats that an African-American salon owner had received. And I wanna say that hate not only shows up in racial slurs, threats, harassment, it also shows up masked under the disguise of a historical event that is only celebrating one of the most horrific institutions, and that is the institution of slavery. The vile and deadly consequence of over 400 years is indeed a stain on our country and is a reminder of the legacy of hate that continues. Now, I understand that I believe this event is not taking place in the city of Elk Grove, but I would ask that you as the leaders stand and make a statement that we are still no place for hate within our city limits, within our city departments, within our city dollars that will support such an event. And if it is any signs, sorry, I was driving on the freeway, but I heard a little bit that are on public property, but even if it's not within the complete jurisdiction, your leadership and your solidarity certainly is. So when you hear the concerns and the voices of the community, we ask that you will stand with us again to say, even in this instance, Oak Grove is no place for hate. Thank you.